on. Going? Yep. Okay, so today we're making a DIY dress that's in the shape of uh, uh, kind of like a shift dress, but it's going to have a flounce at the bottom. So this is self-drafted. I've used my slopper and I'm ignoring the dart, so it's not going to have any waist shaping. I'm going to put some inseam pockets over there. I put a dart on the side seam. And I lowered the neckline um, a little bit. So this is what we're going to have. And then the rest of the fabric over here is going to be used as a flounce. So all this is in my head. I've done it well. And now I'm going to cut into it and sew it up. So I just wanted to make a point very quickly about seam allowances. About why I prefer working without seam allowances. So... This is a narrow fabric, and if I had 5 eighths of an inch seam allowances, I would not be able to have these pattern pieces on the one fold. I'd have had to put this one over here and then this one further down along there. But by using seam, you know, by having flexible seam allowances in the sense that I've got a pattern. A piece that doesn't have the seam allowances I can add them as I see fit so I've got about um, just about three-eighths of an inch seam allowance is what I have going all the way around and that was so that I could get that because I wanted a lot of fabric over there to use on the flounce and I wouldn't have been able to do this if I had five-eighths of an inch so I could play around a little bit more but but I have made a twelve of this, and so I know it's going to fit me. So there isn't a problem. Um, so you could even go up to like a quarter of an inch if you're really struggling uh, for seam allowances. But that only works if your fabric is stable, which this is a cotton poplin and it is stable. So I can have scant seam allowances. Okay, so for this project, I am using my Singer 201K, which is my lovely, lovely favoritest of all the vintage sewing machines that I have. This sews a beautiful stitch. It's only a straight stitch machine, but it does it brilliantly. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do now that I've got it cut out is I'm going to sew up my shoulder dots because I got a little bit of shaping at the back. And then I'm going to sew my bust darts. Right, now that I've got my bust darts and my shoulder darts sewed down, I'm just going to go and do some stay stitching around my neckline and around my armholes. So what stay stitching does is it stops distortions happening along your curved seams and that's because when you cut into fabric like this you create a bias, a seam which stretches out a lot easier than a straight um, seam. So you want to stay stitch your curved edges um, quite a lot. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to put the zipper on the back but before that we're going to add the pockets. So I've cut out four pocket pattern pieces using this uh, cotton broadcloth, which um, is quite full of structure. But before I sew on uh, the pockets, I'm just going to overlock the edges, the curved edges. So my pocket is ready to go in. Sorry, I meant to say that you just overlock the curved edges. We're going to overlock this edge together with the side seam um, of the dress. So we're just going to sew this in using a very scant uh, quarter of an inch seam allowance because I use very small seam allowances with this. Okay, so now the next step is that I'm going to add an invisible zipper to the center seam. Center back seam, rather. But, oh my gosh, guys, look at those ice creams. Ding, 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 ding. 
so excited. Cannot wait to wear this dress. Before we put in the zipper though, we're going to overlock the center back seams. Then we'll put in the zipper. Meanwhile, I've got a little helper who's making her own skirt. And I'm over here overlocking. So my daughter is finished doing the side seams. I just have to do the elastic for her. And after this brief little interlude, I'll get back to serving my face. And you can hear her. And that's your skirt done. Do you like it? Yeah. That's lovely. I think it was a great choice of fabric. <laughs> okay, well, I need to uh, finish off my dress now, but lovely, lovely skirt. Don't forget to fold that one away, okay? Yeah. Bye. And we're back. Here we go. Invisible zipper sewn in. And because you've already overlocked your center back seams, you don't have to worry about trying to overlock with the zipper there. Um, I personally find it a lot easier to do it this way. If you would like to be really fancy, you could finish the edge of this zipper with a little bias binding. Just fold it in neatly and then you hand stitch it onto the seam itself. Okay, <clears throat> the next thing that we have to do is to sew up those shoulder seams now. And we've got what looks like a dress. <laughs> it's the idea of dress, people. Um, ice cream. Milkshake. Mum, milkshake brings all the boys to the yard and they're like, it's better than yours, do you right? Better than yours, did you? But I have to try. Because I'm using a facing to finish the, no, not a facing, I'm using a bias binding to finish the neckline. I don't have somewhere, I'm not going to be able to put my tag on the facing. Um, if I was using a facing, I'd have put it there. But I really want to tag this with my neck because I absolutely love it. Uh, so I'm going to put it onto a pocket. So I'm going to sew it on right now. On the pocket and that will be where my tag is going to be at least I will have tagged this so that you know in years to come whoever gets this will know that this was a Hila Willing handmade original and it's actually a handmade original because I actually designed this myself as well using a sloper of mine so so the next thing is I'm going to finish off the armhole. So I've done the shoulder seams, right? I'm going to put the bias binding finish along the armholes before I do the side seam. And then I'll also do the bias bound finishing on the neckline as well. Uh, so the first step with the bias binding is to sew it down just like that. And so what that looks like on the right side is like that. And then I'm just going to uh, press it under and then stitch it along. And because I used, I used quarter inch seam allowances along the armholes, I don't have to waste time grading or trimming or anything like that. But, 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 big but, um, only use quarter inch allowances when you're absolutely sure of the fit because remember you can always make something smaller it's very hard to make something bigger once you've cut it out again so only use your quarter inch seam allowances when you're absolutely 100% certain and you've made a twirl garment okay so this is what it looks like now that's your armhole finished with a bias binding there and so the idea is you'll then sew your side seam like that I don't know this is how I like to do my um, armhole bias binding okay we're nearly there so now I just have to do this same process onto the other armhole and uh, we'll come back and finish this one later 
Right, so whilst I was doing the second one, because uh, I was stitching uh, with this side facing up and I was feeling my way as I sewed down the bias binding, I did make a little bit of a boo-boo over here where I didn't manage to stitch it on completely. And so I've just used hand sewing to sew this bit down that didn't get stitched down. So hand sewing is very, very useful for saving you. And I didn't want to go through the process of unpicking it. So, yeah, when I press it, this will hardly be visible. Okay, it's getting really exciting now. So we're going to do the side seam and over the pockets. And then we'll have a dress that can be tried on. I'm going to finish the neckline um, last simply because I can't wait to actually try this on. Okay, we have what looks like a dress now so i'm super super excited to actually try it on okay ta -da! <laughs> here we go wow it's looking good looking good we've got the pocket and we've got the loose fit over here because i just wanted it to be a summery dress and then this is going to be finished off with a bias binding, just like we have here. Ah, awesome. So, yeah, so the length is up to here. And then I'm going to add a flounce at the bottom. So I'm actually quite tempted to keep it this length. Oh. Thank mm -hmm. you. 